a good Friday morning. It's a cloudy, overcast, cool day here in Texas, sitting in the garage. And I've just uh, returned and I've gotten my first corn cob, Missouri Meerschaum. Uh, I have one in my collection, uh, but it's it's a pretty old one. It was given to me by, uh, by a guy in one of my previous churches, and it's pretty well burned out. It's definitely been used. The, uh, the shank is is loose, comes out, so it's not smokable, but it is collectible, I suppose. It means something to me anyway. <clears throat> and I've got some uh, Frog Morton on the bayou that I'm smoking in it today, and uh, it's my first, my first try with it, and I like it, I do. Good flavor. It's got perique in it. I, I think this is really the first tobacco I've tried that's got the got you know a good bit of perique. But uh, it's very, very nice. Quite tasty. Quite tasty. Not a lot on the docket for the weekend, so that's that's good. Uh, I've got to do some grading of some assignments and papers from my students, of course. Take care of that uh, later on today. A few other little projects I need to get accomplished. Just taking a moment to uh, to enjoy this. I wanted to get away to get back and try this out. Uh, and it's good. I was thinking of uh, Bless My Buckskins and his his contest haven't entered the contest but but his uh, his question is pretty interesting to me you know, tell a story about one of the most interesting people that you've met and uh, I've met several interesting characters uh, one that one that stands out uh, was a guy who played the organ for our church uh, He's a bit eccentric, kind of unusual, a private man, secretive. And uh, when I when I came to the church as pastor, I was told by one of the staff uh, about him that he has an interesting background. That he used to be with the FBI, um, and uh, he's. A little unusual, he worked for uh, a local funeral home, running from doctors' offices to get death certificates and, and that sort of thing. He's, uh, you know, on up in his years at this point. But, uh, but every Sunday, he would show up, he would come in the side door, it's right next to the organ. And uh, so he would park on that side of the building, he'd just come in that side door. And uh, he would play service, sit through the service, uh, play the organ on the last song, and then out the door he'd go and leave. He lived a good distance away, so he was driving in. You know, it'd probably take him 45 minutes to an hour to drive from his home to do this. Um, and actually, that was the extent of his involvement with us. He would play the organ on Sundays. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, he uh, he invited me, my wife, another uh, one of our staff people out to his house one Sunday for lunch. And he loved to cook. It's another one of his things. He was famous for some of his uh, some of his uh, food that he that he made made soups. He loved doing that. So uh, so we made the trek out to his place this Sunday. And uh, had lunch ready for us. Got to go to his home, and, and he began to kind of open up with us and share a little bit of his background, a little bit of his story. And uh, he had said that uh, when he was with the FBI, um, he was involved in some major 
crime investigation and uh, those who were involved that were prosecuted and um, going to be put away put out a hit on him and uh, uh, it wound up that uh, his car got rigged with explosives and uh, rather than he getting into the car his wife did the car exploded killing his wife um, she may have been the target I, I don't know but you know there's a few other exploits that he uh, he shared with us and, and of course always with the, the idea you know I can't tell you a whole lot about what happened but uh, he, he, re he did recount that story to us and uh, also he he wanted to open a like a halfway house for uh, prisoners who were just getting out and uh, provide a, an environment of, uh, of faith for them you know he had befriended a few who were who were inside that had uh, had come to faith in Christ and he was mentoring them and, and working with them and there was one in particular that was uh, very very talented artist had drawn uh, some amazing pencil drawings that uh, that he sh shared with us that that Sunday we were at his home um, and also he said that he was uh, working on a book he was uh, doing some some writing co-authoring with I think this particular uh, individual who's going to be released soon uh, on some various topics and he also wanted to uh, to write a book about exploits within the in the funeral home. You know the funny things that happen at funerals, and and uh, having conducted a, a number of them myself and been involved in the planning and the execution of a, a lot of funerals, certainly crazy, strange, unusual things can happen. And um, one of our other staff members had worked with him in a funeral home, so he wanted to interview him get some stories for for his book and I think he eventually did that I think he eventually uh, eventually published that I, I'm not really certain we lost contact with him at one point um, he said he was a little just a little eccentric and uh, his health began to fail we, we would see him just every once in a while uh, he stopped playing the organ for us um, the drive got to be too much for him and he eventually had to give up his position of uh, driving around the area collecting uh, death certificates for the funeral home and uh, I think he has since passed away but boy he's a guy that just had amazing stories and uh, you know he, he was the type that you'd think did he really do that you know as maybe there was some embellishment we'll never know now but just a really sweet guy such an unassuming person you'd look at him you'd think this guy was in the FBI really undercover but maybe what a perfect cover it was you know nevertheless um, one of the most interesting characters that uh, that I've met over at least within the last 10 years so there's there's a simple little story so bless my buckskins if you hear this and you want to accept that as a as an entrance to your contest that's that's cool it's not a video response like you'd like you'd ask but I just kept thinking about that and I thought I'd share that didn't have uh, much else to talk about right at the moment other than sharing my new acquisition and uh, my appreciation for Frog Morton on the Bayou thanks for all the recommendations you guys make and man you're just making so many you know if I keep listening to you watching these videos uh, it's going to break the bank trying to get all these tobaccos, you know, but have to refrain, you know, chill, pull back a little bit. But uh, anyway, happy Friday. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Hope you had a nice Valentine's Day. Uh, my wife had to work late yesterday, Valentine's Day, so we really didn't get to celebrate. And all the restaurants, of course, were probably already packed. And she was really just really tired and frustrated from her day at work. So we're probably going to take care of that celebration this weekend. Uh, but uh, but otherwise, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Make the most of it and enjoy. So take care.